Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is a blockchain backer bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, we're going to spend this video looking strictly at the Ripple XRP price chart to try to see if we can figure out if the bottom is already in. I've been spending so much time looking at this chart. Obviously, it's been a, just a whirlwind of a time, whereas most of the market has moved up beyond these levels of where we were consolidating at back in November and December. XRP RP dealing with its own issues, its own news narratives. Clearly, we got a crashing structure in exchange for everybody else getting a rising mooning structure. So we have to deal with the cards that we were dealt with at this point, and we're going to see if we can figure out what's going on on this chart. Fortunately, over the last 48 hours, the picture has started to get much more clear to me on what's happening in here. So I'm going to talk about it. I do believe that the bottom is in down here at 17 cents. Of course, I know exactly what a lot of the comments are going to look like in this video. We have to take into consideration consideration the crazy narrative surrounding XRP and Ripple right now. So, and in this video, it's going to stick strictly to the charts. So that's what we're going to do in this video is talk about nothing but charts in here. As for narratives, as for problems, as for the reasons why we've broken down and deviated away from the rest of the market, I think we've beaten that uh, like a dead horse over the <laughs> over this past week. So we're going to kind of move forward at this point and try to see if we can see what's going on here on the chart. So we're going to dive into this in a second, but it's going to require me to explain things to to you to understand why this is looking the way that it is and why I believe that the bottom is in and while well, it's going to take a little bit of educating for us to get there but like usual I'm going to try to explain it in an easy to understand way and we'll get there so but I'm going to try to get it you know in under 20 minutes so let's go ahead and get started and dive into what is going on here on the XRP price chart first things first we're going to move backwards we're going to go back in time to back into this moment right in here this is the previous run up that we did have where price went all the way up to 33 cents and then crashed all the way back down to 22 cents. So over half my audience was not around during this time. It's incredible how much growth this channel has gotten, but a lot of people were not here during this time, but a lot of you were. So we're going to talk about that, especially the people who are here. They're going to remember what these moments were like, how, how terrible it was being in here. And I'm going to show you the structures and how this structure that we have right here is identical to what we have right now. And I'm also going to show you how that exists throughout the rest of the market and even into the United States stock market to show you that the crashing pattern that we're seeing on XRP right now is a normal crashing pattern, and it would indicate that the bottom is already in. So first things first, I'm going to scoot up here, and then we'll come back to this in a second. But during that time period, there's a normal a normal crashing structure. I've never found anywhere to see exactly what it's called. Uh, we I, I've come up with lots of names on it on my own. I have my own kind of private names. I have a, a words that I don't want to say on the, my channel that I associate with it but uh, you know it's a special kind of dump um and well what happens is we end up having about i always call it seven different waves in a crashing pattern and what we have is we have our first fall down and then you'll have another rise up that'll come up this wave can usually go anywhere from 50 percent or all the way back up to the top and then we have our second run down and this second run down will usually come below this level right here and then we'll move up one more time so here we have wave number one we have wave number two, and now we have wave number three. Now, whatever happens here, this changes all the time on what happens right here. Sometimes it'll usually it'll usually just go down below here. It won't even get back above wave one. Many times we do see it actually come up much higher than that. And then after that, it'll come down and break this level. And this is where you see the signature move that happens in this crashing pattern. So we will see a one, two, three, four, five in here. And they usually are very identifiable and we can pinpoint them pretty well. So at this point, we now have after a parabolic rise of one, two, three with three coming below one a rise back up and then in an easy to identify five wave pattern coming down so this is our fourth wave and this is our fifth wave. So in the fifth wave, we will always see these really strong five waves that take place in here. And then we'll have our sixth wave. And in most circumstances, the sixth wave will come up here to the top of wave four. I'm gonna show you a couple examples of this throughout the market. So right now we're kind of just in the theory building stage of me showing this to you, but then you'll understand here in a second. Then we'll see number six, and then usually we will have our final excess. And a lot of times this final excess number six will be 
be a repeat of this whole thing, but just on a much smaller scale to where we get wave seven. And then that is our bottom, and that is the end of the crash. So I'm going to go ahead and scoot us down here so you can see that exact structure taking place right here. Do you see it right now? So when we were back there and I was looking for 22 and a half cents, it was a pretty wild time because this actually took quite a while. This took about 45 days for this thing to play out. Actually, it looks like it was about 50, 55 days for this thing to play out. But we have our exact structure that was going on in here. We had wave one, we had wave two, we had wave three going below wave one. Then we had wave four. And then do you see the five wave structure taking place in here? So we have a one, two, three, four, five. Then we had our roll up and our roll up did not go above wave four. It just went into the wave four area. Then we went on to do number seven. So we have number five down here, number six over here and number seven. Here's the video that we were talking about this back in September on September 11th, right in here. They will be shocked, many signs of a bottom. So I'm gonna show you a little clip from here talking about how we have this final little excess that takes us down for the finishing move. This one right here, this guy, right there and uh i'm gonna stick to it that it's gonna do it so um i if it was me just being stubborn i could say okay maybe i'm just being way too stubborn expecting that that's going to actually happen but i've done so many different fibonacci analyses on this mm -hmm. and i've seen these kind of structures before where you get these like one two three you get one two three four five way this one pulls up and then you get your seventh one so you have one two three four five six and then you pull over down like that and that marks the true bottom like that so this is something we've talked about on this channel before it's not the first time and we did identify this exact crashing structure during that time expecting that the price was going to continue falling because we had only done six waves after doing these five here in wave number five we had five waves and then we saw that the sixth was still pulling up and expecting that there would still be that seventh one. Once you understand this crashing pattern, you will see it throughout cryptocurrencies, you will see it in the stock market, you will see it everywhere when crashes happen. As crazy as it may seem, we even see it on the entire index of the Dow Jones Industrial Average during the great financial crisis. And we'll zoom in on this a little bit and I'll turn these things on, but we can see how we have it here. We have one, two, three, taking below this level, four, then you have one, two, three, four, five, rolling up without going above four and then crashing down for seven. And I'll turn these back on right here. And we can see that right now. So you have one, two, three, going below wave one, three, four, identifiable five waves on the way down in this fifth wave, six rolls up. And then you have your final excess for number seven, normal crashing structures. We see it over here in the Dow Jones industrial average. We could see it over here on Bitcoin back in 2015 at the end of the Wyckoff accumulation down when Bitcoin crashed from over $1,000 down to about $150. We see it right over here on the final shakeout, the spring area of the Wyckoff accumulation. And we could see it happening right in here with a parabolic rise up. One, two, three, coming down below here, four, one, two, three, four, five, rise up without going above four and then finish off. So this is a typical crash, typical ending structure in a Wyckoff accumulation as well. So whenever I'm looking for a crashing pattern, I'm typically looking for this exact structure. And if you study that and you understand that, you will see it way more often throughout lots of different markets. And when we were back in here, when we were in this time frame, and we were doing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and then we rolled back up in here, it was a funny time for my channel. It was this period where I had accumulated down in here around near 24 cents and accumulated down here near 23 cents. But if you follow this channel, you know I do four different accumulations. I had not entered accumulations number three and number four while this price was still rolling up. And it was a really crazy period because it was a time where people were calling me a dingus for not accumulating because the price was already so close to my target of 22 and a half cents, but also getting called a dingus for accumulating at all because the price was going to go much lower. But in the end, I just stuck with what I've seen so many times in my expectations that we are doing a very normal crashing structure in here and that the price will fall one more time after the sixth wave up. And when we look Look at this final move to the bottom that happened down in here. I'll get some of this off the screen. Look at what even happens in the very final wave. You have a rise up and you have one, two, three, taking out one, four, one, two, three, four, five, 
rolls back up and what do you have number seven so we get it all over again the exact same crashing structure happens right here at the very end as well and you will see that over and over again throughout this market if you just understand that this structure is what a crash usually will look like sometimes they can vary in length which will make them look a little bit different but for the most part that's the thing that i'm always looking for if we do end up getting a crash so now we're going to move over to current times right now and say do we see something like this going on do we see a rise up with seven waves with wave number five having a one two three four five like we just showed over in bitcoin we showed here previously on xrp and we showed over there in the dow jones industrial average and you better believe it we do so we're going to show this here so we have our big rise up right and then you have one two three taking out the low of one four one two three four five rise back up right here to number four go on and complete the finishing move to sell it off and have our capitulation this would be our final excessive move this would be our selling climax so typically this is shorts closing and then this is your selling climax over on december 31st i posted on my twitter that that was our shorts closing and our final excess but obviously at that time i was looking for us to close our monthly level above 30.5 cents so it's been a doozy for me right seeing that we're not closing above these levels we've had these big breakouts that happened back in november and then we've completely lost them. In addition to that, this level never broke for the rest of the market, right? You have Litecoin really firing up, you have Ethereum firing up, and you have Bitcoin firing up all from holding these levels. And we had a really terrible news narrative to come at this exact time with the SEC lawsuit. So now we deal with the cards that we've been dealt and what do we do here? Now I go down and I look at the structure and I say, well, I'm seeing something very familiar that I also see down here that are bottoming structures as well. I'm seeing a perfect Wyckoff accumulation, which means that that would also indicate that this bottom is in. So I've got two different things going on here. I've got a full-blown crashing pattern that is matched crashing patterns that I've seen in Bitcoin. I've seen in XRP. I've used them in XRP back here on the 22 and a half cent level. It worked back then. It also worked on the Dow Jones. It worked on Bitcoin. And now we say, what happens right here? So in a lot of those other charts, we saw different kind of accumulations that took place down here at these bottoms, whether they just came down and flew back up or whether they came down, went sideways and came up. So we have to kind to say that well these things do change down here at the bottom the bottom doesn't always look the same from a structural and especially not this one right this one was absolutely ludicrous going on for like 60 or 70 days so now it's time to try to figure out well okay we have our crash we have everything setting up to show that the bottom is already in what do we need to see down here for this to finish off and that's why i've been looking at this pattern right down in here to see that we actually are showing a wyckoff accumulation i started getting alerted to it when we started seeing this i said okay this is starting to look very familiar but we need to give it some more time to play out then yesterday i got the confirmations that i needed to say okay great this is a wyckoff accumulation it's time to post it on twitter so the last 48 hours have painted the picture finally xrp is the final stages of a perfect wyckoff accumulation i'll deep dive into this crashing structure tomorrow as it is what we see everywhere on charts in my opinion the bottom is in at 17 cents and the pain is almost done to where we're showing this so now it's time to talk about Wyckoff accumulation. I think we've done a good enough job kind of pointing to what crashing structures look like at this point. If we are going to break these supports, we have to deal with the cards that we're dealt with. The cards that we are dealt with show a perfect crashing structure with a one, two, three, four, five down here in the fifth wave down here with the sixth wave taking us back up to this fourth wave of the fifth of the five waves within wave five. I know it's complicated, but if you study it, you'll see it all, all over the place. And then we go on to do our final excess. So now in this moment, moment we're going to say this is our crashing structure that's going to be our bottom now how are we going to round this bottom out and what's that going to look like and that's where we're going to dive into this wyckoff accumulation that we've got going on in here now i've given this a second to play out before i started recording again so i've done a lot of the editing on this video already up until this point to let this play for a minute but as you can see we are starting to make our move to the downside right now in a normal wyckoff accumulation this is what we would look like and if you pay attention to what i have actually drawn here and what i posted on my twitter last night it's this exact same crashing pattern in which what we see is we see a one, two, three, four, 
One, two, three, four, five. Roll back up to four, up to the fourth wave of the fifth wave with a seven and finish it off. So I've essentially shown that in the ending of a Wyckoff accumulation, we do exactly what we've been doing for the whole crashing structure. And we do a miniature crashing structure right here at the very end. And a Wyckoff accumulation is essentially the mark of a bottom and it's how it gets accumulated. And we see all the signs in here that this is a Wyckoff accumulation. We have our selling climax that took place right here. If you can think back in just a week ago or whatever of what it was like in your life when the price hit that 17 cents, did it feel climatic at that time? Did it feel crazy at that time when that price hit 17 cents? That is the selling climax and a perfect mark of the beginning of a Wyckoff accumulation is an automatic rally, which we had right here where the price went up about 42% in a matter of 30 minutes. So we have our perfect automatic rally right here, followed by our secondary test with another rise and a secondary test again in phase B and then setting a slightly higher high right here as we now head into our spring. And usually this will be pretty climatic. It'll feel pretty painful right here heading into the end. It's the final shakeout and usually we will see that the optimistic news will suddenly change after that. So after we get down here, after we get way back in here, I would not be surprised if we suddenly see narratives begin to change at that exact moment. So we're going to see a final test of supply down in here, and most likely the structure will look very similar to what we've seen in the crashing structures and what we've already seen as a miniaturized version of the entire thing that we've already done. And it just is going to be about just this big without breaking into new lows and come as far down as the low, but it shouldn't break into new lows looking exactly like all of this, but on a much, much smaller scale and smaller time frame. And a really great example of this happening within cryptocurrency is when we look back at Bitcoin back in 2015, when it did have its final ending of its bear market, and we had a perfect Wyckoff accumulation at the end of Bitcoin, and we see all the same structures going on in here. We see the big climatic sell-off with an automatic rally right in here, just like we have up in here. We can see how it rolls down for a secondary test, then comes up here, and you can just see kind of a trend line right in here. Do you see how this kind of works out right here? Just like we have in here, you see how it kind of sets a lower high and then rolls back up in here. And then we roll out to this level right up in here, which about equivalent is here. You can see that. And then we come back in here again for our secondary test in phase B, which we have down in here coming down for our secondary test in phase B. Then notice as we come back up here, I'm going to put a line so you can see that it does set a slightly higher high back over here above this rally right over here which is what we do see happening over here in XRP right in here. Then it goes on to do the miniature crash structure with a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and then finishes it off right here without breaking below this level over here. So we see the Wyckoff accumulation perfectly here in Bitcoin back in 2015. You can see the structure playing out right exactly right here. And I do believe this is where we are at. I do believe XRP's bottom is in, and I'm going to be looking for a narrative change to start happening after we complete this so what the narrative will look like going into this moment right here down in here it looks like from a time perspective just a couple of days if that for all of that to play out and then uh, hopefully things start changing after we get down here. So it'll be an interesting time to watch. But as you've seen throughout this video, we have done a complete perfect crashing structure for XRP. And we are finishing up the final phase of a Wyckoff accumulation down here at the bottom. So it'll be very interesting to watch this in the coming days. And I'm pretty excited and I'm feeling pretty good about it. So exciting times. Looking for a lot of things in narrative wise to change in this market. But from a structural technical standpoint, optimism looks to be around the corner. So, all right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Uh, right now, bcbacker.com enrollment is paused right now because I'm adding a lot of update videos to that course right now. So hopefully I have that back up within a week or two, it definitely within two weeks, but I'm hoping I can kind of push it forward to maybe about a week, but I don't know yet. I'm working on it. Everybody still has access to it that already is in the course, but I have paused new enrollment while I'm making all of these updates because the markets have changed now. It's time to update it. So I'm going to do that. I'll let you guys know when it's back up 
up and running. You can follow me over here on Twitter at BC Backer. And otherwise, we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. So I'm feeling pretty excited about this. I'm so glad that this, this thing is finally showing us some information and I'm feeling really optimistic about it. So I hope that you guys like this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor. But if you ever need a pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.